All right, so I have the great pleasure, Matt Longhurst here, Ramsgate uh, manager. Uh, how long has it been you've been managing now for, by the way, um, Matt? Uh, I've been here a couple of years. I've been about 10 games because <laughs> obviously we haven't played. So I came in in January. So I came, well, I've been about 18 months. So I came in January 2020. Um, and uh, then obviously we stopped short in March. Then obviously did pre season and mm. then stopped in October. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, it's been uh, been interesting. Well, uh, just because we're recording this on the twentieth, so you, this is just before your cup game, and I'm I'll quite happily cut this out if something horrible happens. All right, so don't worry. But you got oh, you got Holland and uh, when I saw it, I had a look. I thought it was Holland and Barrett, but Holland, Holland and Blair. Um, yeah, that is a well, that is a banana skin. Um, yeah. What, what, what do you fancy? I mean, obviously, you, you must fancy your chances there. But, um, I mean, this won't come out till next week. So no, that's all right. A bit, but, uh, like, uh, are you going to be taking your full side? Are you going to be uh, trying a few of the uh, squad players out? Uh, no, we take the full team. Yeah, it's, it, it, to be honest, we're a little bit like yourselves. Uh, I spoke to Chris, I spoke to Chris um, uh, Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're a little bit undercooked as well because we brought in a couple at the back end of pre-season mm. and also we've got uh, a few that have missed pre-season. Not all of pre-season, but they've missed, like, Mitch Chapman had two holidays, but in between the holidays, he had to obviously isolate. So he missed five weeks of pre-season, whereas normally he would have mm. missed two weeks. <laughs> um, but having to isolate either side of either holiday... Uh, Tom Chapman and Rory still haven't been in. They're not back in until the end of September um, due to cricket, which, again, normally they would have played cricket last year, but they didn't yeah. play it last year. They didn't want to miss two years of it. Um, so, yeah, pre-season has been a little bit bitty for us. Um, but you just got to understand that, to be fair to the boys, I don't know. We've got two players going away in the next two weeks where they've yeah. had holidays booked and they've now now they're now going to be now missing the next couple of weeks. But... You just can't blame them. They're, they're boys yeah. that have got families that haven't been able to get away for eighteen months, yeah. and with the current climate, I just, I just normally I'd have a moan, but at the moment I just think you just got to be acceptable of it. Yeah. Which is why we've got a bit of a bigger squad. Um, the club have been brilliant in fairness to uh, to James, the chairman, and Richard, mm -hmm. the owner. They've kind of given me the license to go and bring in some extra bodies to um, to try to cope with uh, with the fixtures and obviously the boys yeah. that are missing. Oh, okay. Well, it's a bit of a Bit of a bloody nightmare for you, you managers, isn't it? At the moment, yeah, yeah. I mean, because I've chatted a little bit with Chris and that, who um, has got you know, it's, it's, it's kind words about yourself as well. Because I was asking a few people about, I mean, that's probably what I wanted to kind of move on to. I mean, in terms of the way your style of football, and what, yeah. you know, I mean, you haven't had, as you say, you've only had eight games, but from, from what I've from what I've heard from a various people is that you like a like a high tempo game. You like you're a believer in youth. You know you're, you're a uh, sort of high energy game. Is that would that would that be? Would that yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean ever ever since when I when I got into coaching and managing years and years ago. Now I've always been one of I looked. I spoke to some uh, to some man. I was fortunate enough to be able to get in with a couple of football league clubs and speak mm. to their managers and. Looking at my, so from my point of view, I'm not going to manage Man United, Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, etc. or very unlikely. So what I looked at as a coach and a manager for my own progression was, if I'm going to go up the levels, I then potentially might get a conference job or conference south or Roman Prem job. Um, and to be able to do that, you need to be able to produce players. You need to be able to coach players. You need to be able to move players on. And you need to be able to build football clubs. Mm. Um, and, and so kind of, over the years from Corinthians with young players and the likes of Alfie May and Ryan Johnson that was there at the time. Obviously, Alfie's gone into the Football League, spent five years with me. Ira from Belvedere, the same. Uh, lots of young players. Then I went to East Grinstead and had the likes of Greg Cundall, that's now Conference South. Travis Gregory's now in the conference. Charlie Harris now in the... There's so many young players. Um, and also, as a manager, I think if you don't bring young players through, when you do get the job, that you can then go and pull all these players together. You don't have a pool of players because yeah. they've all finished. <laughs> and I think that's happened to a number of managers that they've run out of a pool of players, never bothered to spend any time building young players. Yeah. And um, when their players are finished, their recruitment's over. Yeah. And, um, and there's a few managers that have gone out of the game that are decent managers but just can't recruit anymore because um, spent so long with a similar group. So yeah. I think that's... And I think that for me as well, like if you're gonna 
you've got to look at what kind of manager you are. I want to develop players. I like developing the players. I like seeing young people get on uh, in the game and in life. Um, mm. And again, obviously, I've had a decent amount of success. Emmanuel Fernandez didn't have a club this time last year. I got him in. Uh, he was way too good for us. Way, way too good. Um, so I phoned Peterborough uh, with the contacts I had there. I said, look, you need to get him in. Just have a look at the kid. Like He's 18, 19, six foot five, centre half. Quick, can play off both feet. It's just a no-brainer. They yeah. got him in. He trained for nine weeks with the first team. He got offered a two-year deal. He's played against Chelsea in pre-season. They're already talking about there's an opportunity for him. He's already been in the squad in, in, in the championship uh, club. So for me, that's... And that's where we've now managed to get a lot of the, the boys we've got at Ramsgate now have come off the back of sort of buying into the fact that we've managed to help quite a lot of young players over the years. Um, and then the style of play... It, it suits those players. Um, obviously, we've, the club, again, have invested nearly a million pounds in the stadium. So the whole place looks so different now. The 3G is amazing. Being able to train on it regularly. Mm. Since I've been at Ramsgate, I haven't trained twice in a row. Um, we haven't had the training facility. Um, when I got here, there wasn't any training kit, track suits. It, uh, it was just all over the place, really. Um, and um, I think now, the boys are now in training at the same venue twice a week. The training kit's hung up for them. Their towels are laid out for them. Uh, very similar to, to Chris and yourselves. Um, if you want people to be professional and act professional, you've got to give them the environment that encourages that. 100%. Um, 100%. And I think that's what what, what kind of I... It's, it's not for everyone. It doesn't have to be done like that. But for me, um, I think that's the way that I, I like to do things. Oh, nice one. What was I going to go? Yeah, so, so you, the Southwood Stadium, you, you mentioned... Uh, big investment there. I mean, what from a from a humble fans' point of view, when we wander there, what how impressive is it? No, it's, it's impressive. Yeah, I mean, we played Spurs here, and we had three thousand. Um, we've obviously we've got seventy six youth teams, so there's over a thousand kids in the club. Blimey. So yeah, so we've we've turned the. Who's your administrator? Blood. You no, know, not me. Not me. It's amazing. It's... The job they do. It's just phenomenal. They never yeah. seen anything like it. The team. That's amazing. Awesome. That is incredible. That. No, it's incredible just to facilitate it um, on the pitch for training nights. Um, Ian Heath, who's the general manager of the club, and, and mm. Caroline, the, the, the youth secretary and the first team secretary, just literally night and day. Um, uh, yeah, phenomenal. But And all the coaches in the youth section are great in terms of the effort that goes in. But, yeah, obviously, we've got a young... The idea is, is to create a young fan base. Yeah. There's the more... These, obviously, a lot of non-league football is is a lot of older generations in terms of people that have watched these clubs for years. But people don't generally tend to spend too much time thinking, right, what happens when these guys are not around? Um, so we, we've kind of spent a lot of time. We've installed the panic cages in there so the kids can play. When we're playing you, we've actually invited your sevens and eights to play our sevens and eights on the pitch before oh, the game. Brilliant. So just so, so you know, so I can push it a little bit. So what, what time is that going to kick off? Is that going to be a last two? Off at quarter, quarter past 12. Oh, okay. Quarter past 12. And then we've got a um, we've got the UK's number one children's entertainment company coming in for the kids. So when they finish playing the games, we're going to give them all some food, uh, all the kids oh. that are part in the games. And then there's a children's entertainment here for the whole afternoon up leading up until kickoff. Oh, brilliant. That's, that's a um, good touch, that. Yeah, so we've done that. We, we, we flipped. There was a kind of an old shed, really, in the corner of the stadium that wasn't really used. It was used as a bit of a classroom. Mm. We've changed that into a glass-fronted bar. So it's glass all the way across the front, and it's got a brand-new bar and everything. It's all been redecorated inside. Well, with and beer I'm, in it. Yeah, with beer. With beer yeah. in it, excellent. That's what Perfect, I like to yeah. hear. Exactly. So <laughs> what the idea of that is on training nights now, the parents yeah. sit and watch the kids train all week, Monday to Friday. And sit in the bar in the warm, oh, nice. drinks, food. Um, and obviously then on a max day, it becomes a sponsor's lounge, a corporate lounge, and also a general bar for the for the public um, supporters, etc. So Humble me. Humble me can get in there, yeah? 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Excellent. 100%, yeah. So, so now yeah. it's just, it's really just trying to create, an, a, again, an environment where, so mm. we want to inspire the kids in Fanet to want to play for Ramsgate because... Of course, they all want to watch the telly and play for Arsenal or Man United yeah. and all these other clubs. But realistically, if they can, it, it, it's achievable to play Ryman South or Ryman Prem mm. football, but in front of a thousand people. Yeah. And as a kid, that, that's aspirational to be able to go. Well, actually, this is I could play here. Like I could get on that mm. pitch. So for our thousand kids, 
it's vital that, and they're getting to know the players now. We've got our players come off the pitch, and we've got four or five of our first team players here with me working on the soccer school this week. The kids know them, they come off the pitch, they want their autographs, they want to sign their boots. The players would be great spending time with them. Yeah, That's just right. really, we're trying to, trying to create some mentors for the young people in yeah. Fanet. It's a Fanet itself is is the it's got the highest level of deprivation and unemployable and unemployment for sixteen to twenty four year olds in the country. So it's just really trying to aspire these people that they can. And then there's other jobs they don't have to play for the team. They can work on the turnstiles. They can do mm. the programs. They can run the social media. Work in the bar. Um, so it, it's just becoming a proper what I would call it. It's a business, but it's a football club. It's a proper yeah. football club. It's not. It's not just a first team. Um, and as much as well, obviously, we want results and obviously everyone would like results straight away. You've seen yourself, like, it's taken Chris a number of times to build a team and build a yeah. football club. And kind of Hastings, Maidstone from the past, from where to where they went from to where they are now, is a big blueprint for us. The style of football and the kind of the youth, obviously, I think during pre-season, you had 12 of your homegrown players in the first team squad. And yeah. I think that takes time. But Chris has been there four or five years now and I'm, Obviously, ultimately, you probably would have got promoted had it not been for, for COVID. Yeah. Um, certainly not last year, because you can't really say, but the, the year before was year about before. that. But yeah. I think mean, we've kind of looked at, and also we've looked at the way that he's set the team up with with, with Craig and, uh, and Gary as the centre-halves, poke through the middle, which gives you a bit of stability and experience. Obviously, Sammy Adams and Jack Dixon in midfield. And then you've obviously got a lot of the youngsters around that. So we, we've kind of looked at a similar a similar kind of model, really. Yeah, so I was going to ask you, like, from, from our point of view, when we come along, who is going to give us nightmares? Hopefully all of them. <laughs> but, uh, there's a few, mate, to be yeah. fair. Jordan Jadozzi is a very, very talented centre-forward. Mm. Um, Joshua Jay is a, is, a, is, a, is a very, is a big threat. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, we've got, I mean, look, we've, we've got some talented young players, yeah. uh, a bit like yourself, but we so play you very early. Um, I would have liked this game as much as I'm looking forward to it. I would have liked this game in six weeks' time because I think it would have been a really, really. It would, I still yeah. think it'll be a good game, but I think in six weeks when we're both get going, I think it would. Have I'll, been a I'll really, move you really on that. Uh, yeah, we're both a bit undercooked at the moment, so um, 100%. yeah, yeah. No, I mean, well, you know, um, obviously, you know, I want, I want Aston's to win, but like, I'll, I'll be, you know, you, 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 you do, it, from what you've been saying and what I've been checking out, like Ramsgate. Have, doing everything the right way particularly like around like making the club a, a proper community club and not 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 the fake word community but you know oh. you know you're actually doing it the right way so you know i mean that that leads to long-term success uh, no, no, no matter what result you get against us i mean you're doing all the right things there i mean where where do you see like, say for, i know it's difficult to say that now but where do you see yourself this season where do you think you're going to be fighting for the playoff spots and top side, or I mean, I, I mean, I know I'm you're going to, to play it down. Obviously, like everyone does, but uh, no. Nah, look, to be honest, we just got to keep some stability on the pitch. The club over the last ten years has changed the owner, I think, six times, or the chairman mm. six times, not the owner. I think we've changed the manager eight times or seven times in that period. Um, I think just need some stability. Yeah. Like I say, since I've been here, we ain't played ten games in a row, so. I think it'd just be nice to keep a continuous group of players together, work on the training ground on a regular basis. At my previous clubs where we've had success, you've got to be somewhere three, four years to actually see it come to fruition. So it can't be built overnight. You can't build football clubs on the sand. It just, it never works. It don't work at any level. Um, so I just think for us, we haven't really set any real stipulations to the players um, because the players have played one game together and that's it. That's the first game of the season. They ain't even played one pre-season game together. So I think in 10, 12 games, we'll start to get yeah. an idea of where the league's at and then where we're at as well, because they've got a bed in. Like already this week in training, we look way in front of where we were a week ago. Um, hmm. And in six weeks, we'll be way in front of where we were. But I think look, we want to be in the right end of the table. Um but there's another 20 managers that want to do the same, or 90 other managers that want to do the same. And there's a lot of, there's quite a lot of clubs now, like Tommy Warrell, like Ashford's been there a long time. Chris has obviously been there a long time. Ross, although he's only just gone in at White, knows a lot of them players. He's brought yeah. a lot of the Lewis squad over there that they hadn't got promoted with. 
Um, Kevin Watson at Cray Valley's had them together for a, a long time now, been there five, six years. Mickey Collins has been at Seven Oaks for five or six years. Mm. Um, so and that's just off the top of my head. So Burgess Hill, Jay, Jay's been there two or three years now. Um, Hayward Heath, Sean's been there for 10 years across two periods. So you, you've got a lot of stability at a lot of the clubs um, with a similar group of players. So I think having not played for a, for a period of time, I think it's quite difficult to, to, to say it. But I think you can pick the top four or five teams based on that, based like yourselves, Cray Valley, White Hawk, uh, Seven Oaks, Herm Bay as well. Ben's been there three, four years now yeah, good, uh, with a similar good group. Good side, yeah, right. good side. And it's not, that's not a surprise. Um, and I think... People, I, I never talk about people's budgets and stuff because I just think it's irrelevant. Like people go, oh yeah, but they got this, they got that. No one really knows. Um, it's just all hearsay. Yeah. Um, and I think for me, if a manager can get certain players to play for them at a certain club, regardless of how they get them there, if they stay there for a period of time, they obviously enjoy it. Mm. Um, the likes of Zach Anter and that, they could they could go loads of different places, but they don't. They stay playing for Ben and Bay and fair play to him. Mm. Um, and the same with Chris. You know, I mean, you've got players that play there, so. I think, yeah, I think the league, I think in 10 games, you'll get a little bit of an idea, but I think normally you'd say 10 games. This year, you might say 15, because there's a lot of players in our league that ain't played any football for any months. Um, so, yeah, I think, but for us, it, it's continuity, that's the key. It, it's not where do we finish, can we drive, uh, like, I think it's more, this group of players needs to be together at the end of the season. And if it is, I'm confident we'll be, in, in the right position in the league. Very good luck to you. And obviously, good luck tomorrow uh, in the Cup. Um, and I will look forward to coming along on the Saturday. Experiencing the Southwood Stadium. Obviously, yeah. there's places to go for a beer. So, yeah. uh, yeah, I'm happy. But no, no, absolute pleasure, Matt. And uh, all the best for the season as well. No, great stuff. No worries. Cheers, Thanks, mate. Matt. Thanks for your Cheers, time. Mate.